Um, Laura is actually one of our panellists today, so I'm glad Laura is able to join us. Okay, I'm going to get started. So welcome to Quartier's Women in Business webinar. I'm just going to do some technical checks with you for, uh, for, for a moment, just to make sure that you all understand how to use GoToWebinar for those of you who are not familiar with this platform. Um, on the right hand side of your screen, you should see an orange um, button with a white arrow. If you click on that button, it will open up um, a webinar uh, toolbar for today. And on there, you will be able to see a variety of facilities that you'll be able to use to interact with us. You're all on mute and your webcams are off um, at the moment. Um, and you'll only be able to see myself, Sarah, who's actually delivering the session, and Laura as well, who's um, one of our case studies today. Um, but if you have any questions for us during the session, there's a questions tab um, on, in the toolbar. So if you click on that, you will be able to ask us any questions that you have, and we, we can go through those as we progress through the session today. Um, so if you have any issues with hearing us or seeing these slides at the moment, then please pop a question in the question tab, and we will have to try and fix that problem for you as soon as we can. Okay, so I'm going to move on. So I'm Emma Tamplin, I'm the Collaboration Manager at Quaratig and I'm your co-host for today. You won't see an awful lot of me after the intro slides, it will be mainly Sarah, um, but I will be keeping an, an eye on the questions tab and asking Sarah the questions as we progress. So Quaratig, for those of you who have not heard of Quaratig, we are the leading gender equality charity here in Wales. And since 1992, we have been working to ensure that women can enter the workplace, develop their skills and build rewarding careers. We have a vision of a Wales where every woman and every girl is treated equally and is fully able to participate in the economy, in public and in political life as well, and live safe from violence and fear. And at Quartig, we deliver a number of um, support services and training and um, services for businesses as well in Wales to ensure that we have a fair and inclusive country where women's voices are heard and to ensure that they can flourish and become the best that they can be. So today's session is one of three. We're actually delivering three sessions um, funded by Welsh Government in partnership with Business Wales. It's all about providing business support for women and um, trying to encourage women to think about entrepreneurship as a potential um, potential career option. So today is all about could I be a businesswoman and that session is being delivered by Sarah Rees, uh, who we'll meet very soon. Sarah is also delivering the second session with us on the 16th of December, um, Is There an Idea in Me? And then the third session will be on the 17th of December, looking at how you can finance your business, um, looking at a, a variety of options available to you. So now I'm going to hand you over to Sarah Rees for today's session. Please, could you have a pen and paper to hand um, to make any notes as you go, go through the session? There will be a break at 12 o'clock as well. And um, again, as I mentioned, if you have any questions for Sarah, um, then just pop them into the questions tab. I'll keep an eye on those and then we can ask them as we go along. OK, so I'm just going to um, turn myself uh, turn my mic off, turn the camera off, and hand you over to Sarah. Bear with me. Okay, Sarah, you should be present. You should have presenter uh, um, right now. There we go. We can see your screen. Okay, if everyone can see that, and I'll just put it to a slideshow. Um, can everyone still see the video or just the slideshow? I can just see the slides. Okay, I'm going to escape that for now because I think it's really important that we see Laura at this point. Um, so welcome. Yeah, I would like to firstly, um, before I introduce myself and the programme, I wanted to welcome Laura. Um, Laura runs a business called Mallow's Beauty and um, I have followed her business for some time, but I thought she'd be an absolutely amazing person to tell us about her journey. So we've got someone to inspire us. Um, Sorry, I'm just checking the technical part. Um, okay, Laura, if you would like to start by telling us about your business journey. Okay, hi, nice to meet everyone. Um, I'm Laura Mallows. Um, so I founded Mallows Beauty 
So we are a skincare brand, which is all about real, real girls, real products, real bodies, real issues. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been a bit of a mad year. I started in on February the 6th last year, 2020, just before COVID, which is the worst time ever to have started a business. Um, but it kind of was really exciting as well. Um, I had this idea that I was so sick of skincare brands and beauty brands, you know, promoting Photoshop models and making this, you know, image of this unachievable woman and that we all had to try and be like them. Um, and I read this article that apparently Vogue created cellulite and I was just outraged because all these little young girls, my next door neighbour who's 10, is obsessed with cellulite and spots and perfection and I just thought it's so unfair. So I wanted to create a beauty brand that kind of turned that on its head and created products that actually do what they say they're going to do. I mean, no beauty product's going to cure cellulite, so there's no way that I was, sorry, my dog's in the background, <laughs> wondering who I'm talking to. Um, uh, so yeah, so, um, ah, Artie, stop. <laughs> Working from home life. Um, so yeah, so I wanted to create products that kind of myth, myth busted. So that's why on the back of all my products it talks about body positivity and you know the lies that we've all been fed and and how actually you should feel amazing in yourself so that's kind of the idea of the business and where it all started um and yeah obviously because of covid um i started to develop issues straight away so i couldn't get any of the ingredients for the skincare um and luckily i had to close ties with a distillery um, who started to make hand sanitizer. So I thought, okay, cool, I'll make hand sanitizer and I'll make it cute and fun and put positive messaging on it. So that got picked up by Harper's Bazaar as we were the beauty brand of 2020 to watch, which was mental because at that point it was just me on my kitchen table thinking, yeah, beauty brand. <laughs> um, and then Harrods bought some and then Skinny Dip bought some, and then local airports and train stations and social care workers, and all, all of a sudden I had this fully fledged business that I couldn't manage on my own. Um, and we were, had loads of orders and it was insane. So my partner who was on furlough um, helped me. I was like, I can't, because at one point I was labeling bottles myself and, God, they went off to a TV program, um, QVC, and and we were having on our kitchen table on Saturday night, which no one knows about, labeling all these bottles like madmen, trying to get them to send them out to QVC on Monday. Um, so it was a bit mental. And then he told the company that he was kind of working in the business and he wasn't going to go back, and we started doing it together. And then we got our skincare products in. Um, and we spoke to Superdrug, or I spoke to Superdrug, and Superdrug took us an order, which was madness. So they took 7,000 units of a gift pack. Um, and yeah, it kind of took off from there. And then it misguided, we had an order of misguided. Um, funnily enough, I emailed the owner of misguided, who was on a TV program about misguided at the time. And I emailed him, you know, standard spiel because I email thousands of people trying to get my brand out there like everyone always asks me oh my god how did you get on misguided and all these brands and it's literally just from nagging but I I emailed him and within five minutes of emailing him he was like absolutely love this brand cc the bias you have to buy it and I was there like oh my god I was watching him on tv yesterday um so yes this month, which is super exciting, we're actually launching, I haven't told anyone yet, but you guys can be the first to know, we're launching with Nasty Gal and Miss Pap and um, I Saw It First. And next month we are launching, hopefully, with Urban Outfitters, which is huge because they have so many shops. So I think, yeah, it's been a bit mental. We have a warehouse now. There's three of us in the business. We have a salesperson. Um, Ronnie's in the warehouse. I kind of do all the social media. Um, so yes, it's a bit. It's a bit mental. It's kind of 
taken so off quite so has all of that happened in the last 12 months 10 well yeah 10 months <laughs> that's amazing and so i think what's important for the people who are listening today is what was that first step that you took and did you feel really brave when you took it i was i was terrified actually um I've always had, because I worked, you know, in design and buying, I, I've always had all these ideas of businesses or wanted to have a business, but it was always a dream. It was never really something that I could ever make a reality. And I got to the point in my life where I was really not enjoying a job and I couldn't see any like light at the end of the tunnel with what I was going to do. Um, and I kind of felt a bit lost. And it was you know, my partner, my dad, everyone around me, my old boss saying, oh my God, you know, you've made how much money for, you know, other companies and you just need to believe in yourself. And I think, oh, taking that first step was, it was scary, you know, leaving a fully paid job to, to nothing was terrifying. I did have a part-time job on the side whilst doing Mallow's Beauty. Um, I still do. <laughs> um, that's just to try and cover it's just pocket money really you know um that was like my cover those basic costs isn't it yeah mm. and obviously if the work got cut all through covid and has only just started picking up again um i think that was the idea for me that was like my fallback you know okay i've got that on the side but yeah it was terrifying but i think i had as soon as i did it i had this like fire that I wanted to prove to everyone that what I could do and I wanted to prove to everyone you know that I could make something amazing um, and that kind of drove me forward. I can vouch it, that for the products as well they are amazing because I've had a really busy week this week and on Monday night I I went to bed with a face mask on and I was glowing the next day after it. they're beautiful oh, and it's <laughs> lovely just to see all the positive messages as well is really nice. Um, so talking about those first steps when it comes to actually taking the plunge into the business what was the first little things that you did was it a name or was it you know calling someone so you could start to make a product for me naming was the hardest thing i think that probably came last i want i had all these like wacky names but everyone was like you have to call it mallows it has to be related to you you know, because I was talking about skin positivity and my anxiety and mental health and everything that's so linked to the business. But I had all these, I, w I wanted to call it rose tinted glasses or I am. And that was really hard for me. I think the, for me, the easiest thing and the most natural thing was deciding what kind of products I would want and what the aesthetics would look like and the kind of feeling and what it was about that was the most important thing to me so i think as soon as i kind of i mean i, I all my ideas came from driving to the job i hated <laughs> so i'd be in the car thinking oh yeah i could have repeat after me i am enough and all these like all my inspiration from hating something came something quite positive and oh no it has to be about mental health or it has to involve skin positivity and then i was like okay well what products would you do and that kind of started the business I think the first proper step I took was finding a graphic designer to design all the artwork. And then when I started to see it come into life, I was like, yeah, this is it now. Um, and sourcing suppliers took ages to get the right ones. Um, Cause I didn't want them to be from China. I wanted everything to be from the UK. Um, I didn't want any crossover with any companies that I'd previously worked with. So I wanted all brand new suppliers that had no kind of issues with you know or any kind of I'd be, be getting trouble for so they were the first so, step <laughs> when you talk about the work that you did before were what were the skills that you could bring from you know your previous jobs into this business so I worked in London for four years um for June London the shoe and bag company um so I worked my way up from entry level to um wow. like junior buyer basically um so yeah wow. i was on accessories so shoes and handbags but i also bought and designed um headbands and makeup bags and scarves and gloves and i loved all the little knickknacks i brought so many new product areas to june so i think that was like kind of all my grounding work creating 
products for someone else. So I kind of knew, I mean, Mallow's Beauty are all the products that I would, I love, that I would want. So it's so much easier than creating products that you wouldn't necessarily wear yourself. Um, yeah, that's all. So it's all based in things that you wanted to have for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff that I love, stuff that I need for my skin, stuff that I enjoy doing. I literally use all my products every single day. I get told off by Ronnie, he's like, stop using our stock. <laughs> Like, oh, just one more bath bomb. <laughs> but you are glowing. I think you're, you know, you're the, the image of your business, aren't you? Oh, thank you. Thanks. So, what what about outside of work? What what are the kind of skills that you think that you have in general life that you've brought into it and that have helped you to your business to thrive? I don't know. Um, that's a tough question. I I'm not sure about this skills but hobbies I've definitely brought in you know like or maybe issues that I'd face you know like my anxiety I hold businesses I suffer with anxiety and I didn't know what it was and all my life I was felt like I was different or I didn't know why my brain was working differently to everyone else's and I was obsessing about the way people said things to me or the, what they thought and it wasn't until very late, like when I was like 26, when I realised what it was and I kind of then could get help for it. So that channels me um, with the brand because I want to do something good. I want to know about skills in my personal life because my actual personal Instagram is awful. <laughs> I can't even say Instagram. Instagram terrified me when I started doing it. I was like, I have no idea how to create content. Um, mm. I quite enjoy it now. So I don't know. That's a really good point to bring up, though, because um, I know that that's one thing that can put a lot of people off is, you know, you see all these successful people on Instagram, on social media. But um, how have you been able to utilize that for your business? Because obviously you you are doing it really well. You're going really successfully. I, to be honest with you, it's been a lot of research and seeing what brands that I aspire to be do well and trying to kind of emulate it in my own style and honest to god when I first started Instagram I was terrified I wanted to pay someone to do it but I couldn't afford to so I thought oh god I'm gonna have to have a go at it and you know the, the first few 10 images weren't great and they just kind of slowly slowly got better um and yeah I think I think a mix with other people's stuff your stuff professional stuff it it also actually a tip that I got re a lot of girls who are like studying photography or what um, aspiring photographers or bloggers they they will take photos for free for you if you just send them product and they'll even send them back to you so that was a good place to start for me when I found when people started messaging me that that was I that was really really helpful um, and I still occasionally do that now if I'm looking for content but at the moment I have so much content that <laughs> I don't I need to post it all you know it's too much to post and that was my all, always my worry that I'd run out of content but it's definitely not an issue that I have um so if anyone wants people that um the photography students give me drop me a e message on Instagram and I will send you there so um you can use them as well that's really helpful so yeah. When you know that's really handy to talk about the things that you knew you couldn't afford to um, ask other people to do. Was there anything that you thought, hang on, I can't do that, and I am going to have to ask for help? Um, yeah, there was a pro yeah. There's been there's been a few things, um, especially when it comes to like skincare. You know, we bought a filling machine to fill hand sanitizer, and we we soon realised that the units we were doing we couldn't we couldn't do by ourselves so we had to outsource um ads ad, adverts on facebook me me and ronnie my partner my business partner we were like yeah that's easy peasy facebook talks you through it we can do it ourselves and we really quickly wasted a thousand pounds on ads that did nothing um and realized that we had to have help because they're these people are experts technical experts for a reason because they quickly changed the algorithm to make money whereas we were yeah we lost we lost money very quickly so i definitely think there are areas that i know that we can't do and you have to kind of uh outsource yeah. but um also trade I, I will say that um 
being married to an accountant was very helpful for me in business because um, yeah. I could just hand those things over and not have to worry about a spreadsheet. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, accountants as well, yeah. Finance terrifies me. I had a meeting with my accountant this morning, actually. But um, yeah, that whole side of business terrifies me. It's, it's, it's funny, isn't it? You either, you have a skill set and maybe if it's something creative or you make something or you can provide something but then with business you have to be so all round you have to have all these skills and your head's in so many different places at one time I think that's what's difficult but exciting at the same time. How do you cope with that and how do you how do you switch off? Um, I don't switch off <laughs> which is really bad because my brand's all about self-care and looking after yourself and I really struggle to switch off. Um, but I think at the moment, I, I'm loving it. I love it. I'm obsessed. Like all I think about, I dream about, I talk about is Mallow's beauty. Um, and it probably sounds really sad to other people, but I, I love it. So it's fine. And, you know, I get thousands of messages on Instagram from girls or bi other businesses asking for help. And, and I love it. I love talking to people. Um, I feel like Instagram is my baby. I was terrified of it, but it it's so good for business. I've had so much business through it um yeah and I'm up to like 11 half 11 messaging people back <laughs> so I don't really shut off I have a bath bath I really yeah. have a bath yeah with a bath bomb that that helps um love a, watch the film I love to watch a film on Netflix with a face mask but um yeah Instagram is always there if I see a message from a girl or someone I'm like yeah I'm just gonna reply <laughs> but then I think if you know you're obviously enjoying it so you know why switch off from something that's bringing you joy it isn't like a job that you're trudging into like you said before that you you know you didn't feel joy going into work and that's why you were dreaming of doing something different yeah I, I've loved I love I've loved it it's been hard work the last 10 months have been amazing yeah you yeah, it's obviously you have difficult points but every time something good happens I literally dance around my house <laughs> like when Nasty Gal wanted to launch I was like yes or when you have an order a big order on Shopify you're like yeah you know amazing. Yeah, and, and John Lewis was really good as well. <clears throat> yes, because that's where I saw you in John Lewis. That was amazing. So how did you come up with that? Did you message them to get into John Lewis and have a pop-up shop? Yeah, there's a company called the Great British British Exchange. Um, and they're all about um, companies that are made in Britain. You've got to have like a criteria of so many things related to Great Britain. So either made in, designed in. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, there's like a. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. I haven't got headphones. Okay. Okay. What's this? Um. So yeah. So you, there's a criteria you've got to fit about being British, and if you fit that criteria, then they they will support you. So they'll support you, um, get you into John Lewis or other brands. Um, and the whole idea is, if your pop up successful, then you could kind of pitch to John Lewis your idea and hopefully sell in there full time, which would be. <laughs> obviously amazing <laughs> it's the door so, that's why sorry can I answer uh, that? yeah that's fine um I don't know if anyone else had any other questions that they wanted to add in that they could ask I haven't realized I've got to say having looked at Mallow's Beauty and followed it that um Laura's business was less than a year old I it, it looks like something that's been going for much longer and I think that that you know sometimes you you can read things into a business that you don't see and and that can be quite interesting I think at the end of that did you think we were older than a year yeah yeah oh, cool. thank you <laughs> I have a question from the audience um Laura if you wouldn't mind answering um sure. what age do you think age is an issue to start a business um one of our attendees today is 54 uh, no way, because my dad started his first business when he was 54, two years ago, and his business is booming. Um, so definitely not. I mean, his business puts mine to shame, but <clears throat> I'm only a year behind, so I'm sure I can catch up. But 100% not. You, you definitely go for it and smash it. I'm sure you'll make it amazing. Thank you, Laura. We've also got another question as well. How do you find suitable in suppliers? Oh, um, I don't know what the normal way is, but I googled. <laughs> All I went on, I went on Google, and 
and obviously because it was like covid time phone calls was was what i could do and try and test samples out and see what um i liked but yeah i, I have it, it was just google <laughs> hope that's okay thank you the power of the internet um we have another no. question as well they can be thick and fast now how far ahead are you planning everything sounds quite fast evolving so it sounds like yeah. you've achieved quite a lot in, in a short space of time so how far in advance are you planning ahead yeah so i'd like to say that we plan but we it it all happens so quickly um I mean, there's certain things that we've got in our calendar, like events in June and July. Um, but because of COVID, we've had to be quite fast moving and kind of changing anyway, because we had so many things on that have been cancelled. We were meant to be in John Lewis from July this year to December, but obviously we could only be starting December. We had events that have been cancelled. So planning's kind of gone out the window anyway this year. Um, so I think we're quite reactive. Um, I'd like to start planning, um, and I'm definitely trying to plan product launches a little bit more spread out because I think I just went, oh my God, I'm so excited. Let me just do everything I can possibly think of. And I think we need to, and I need to calm down on that. So um, to be honest, not much planning, but hopefully we'll start planning going forward. <laughs> it's been a difficult year to plan though, isn't it? We've got to admit yeah. that. <laughs> yeah it's it's been literally everything we planned has been has got knocked knocked out even products because x y or z ingredient couldn't come in so so yeah so every plan that we have done kind of got annihilated um i'm definitely planned up until january i've got some really exciting things at the moment that i'm planning that i can't wait to start working on so so yeah stay tuned follow me on instagram <laughs> so what would be, um, i have a question from one of our attendees who um i think she may have missed the beginning of the the webinar um, and she wanted to know the name of your business and perhaps whilst you're talking about the name of your business maybe you can just signpost as to where we can find you your web address your instagram sort of um name and so on um so it's mallows beauty m-a-l-l-o-w-s it's actually my surname um and on instagram we are mallows beauty and my website is www.mallowsbeauty.co.uk i think facebook is mallows beauty uk um but yeah all information is kind of on our instagram and facebook so you can get onto the website from there uh, thank you i have another question um did you email companies randomly or do you have a wish list uh, how did you get through to the decision makers? Oh, I 100% had a wish. I've got a wish list. I've got like a list of companies that I really want to work with and I'm just slowly ticking them off. Um, I got, I actually invested in um, Sales Navigator, which is like LinkedIn Pro, because you can find out who's working at one company, who the decision makers are. And then I go on um, Email Hunter on Google and just type in the person's name and the company and it'll come up with their email address and literally email away. So we were meant to launch in December six Topshop concessions, but obviously Topshop's gone into um, administration, so we can't be can't launch Topshop concessions. However, I emailed Topshop for about six months and I emailed every director. And this last director, I was like, this is the last person I'm emailing, I'm giving up, I'm done. She emailed back within half an hour and set up a meeting and we got concessions. So I really do think it's like persistence is key and just finding the right person in the company, um, emailing everyone worked in that. I, I mean, yeah, you might be annoying, but who cares? I don't care, it's worked for me. <laughs> if anyone knows anyone at Beauty Bay, that'd be great because I've literally emailed everyone there and no one replies. <laughs> Well, thank, thank you, Laura. Thank, thank you. I hope it's been okay. I don't know if I've been, um, if I, I hope I've been informative. <laughs> I think it's hugely interesting. I wanted to just ask one more question. Um, what would be your one tip for people to get started and take that first leap? Um, I think the hardest thing for me was believing in myself. You know, like I wanted to start a business for two years, so I think. I think, yeah, just believe in yourself, surround yourself with people that are going to push you when you're most doubting yourself and 
just do it. I think it's the most rewarding, exciting thing you can ever do. And I've loved every second of it. So yeah, I think push yourself. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time because I know how busy you are and I am hoping that everyone will follow you and they can continue to follow your amazing business journey. Um, thank you. It's been really great to listen to you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> Brilliant. Laura, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, to, if you need to exit the session, can I ask you to just click on file and then leave webinar? Please don't press end webinar or you'll kick us all out. Okay. <laughs> the pressure. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye. Bye. Okay, well, thank you. Um, that was amazing. I've learned so much already. So I don't know about you. I'm hoping that you have. Um, can anyone see me and can they also see the slides on the screen now? Yes, we can see them now. Thank you, Sarah. Perfect. Technology is the thing that always shakes me. So um, it's good to know that we've got it working. Um, yeah, so I hope that you enjoyed that because I found it amazing. Um, what I wanted to do with you today is going to be quite a quick fire session and it's going to be something that you will have the opportunity to kind of make notes and, um, you know, work on things as we go. So you'll have you know, a bank of information at the end of each session that you can then use towards your business idea. Um, so what I wanted to do, first of all, is tell you a little bit about me. Um, in 2013 I was a new mum, I had a great job that I loved um, and that rug was pulled from under me because I was made redundant whilst I was on maternity leave and I know that you know that kind of thing has happened to a lot of people this year, it's been a really difficult year with all the twists and turns of you know the dreaded C word that we don't want to mention, um, you know maybe you're someone who hasn't been in work for a while, maybe you've been a carer, um, you know, or maybe you're just someone who doesn't fit inside a corporate box, you're sick of doing job interviews, you don't want to do another one and you're inspired to do something different. You know, maybe you're just looking for your passion and we can help you find your passion today and turn that into a business. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do in these workshops is take you through the process that I followed when I set up my new business. Um, you know, it was after redundancy, it was a tricky time. I had a small baby at home um, and I'd been to some formal business workshops about things like writing business plans. You know, what's your executive summary? What are your financial projections gonna be for the first year? You know, who are your competitors? What have you thought about marketing? And all of those questions, um, you know, they can put you off and they can put up, build up barriers that, that kind of scare you from taking that first step. So what I did was quite different and I, it was more a creative process um, because I knew inside that I had a desire that I wanted to help other women to be inspired, to find their passions and their careers. Um, and I knew that I had the expertise to deliver training that could help people to do just that. Um, so one of the things that we do have to talk about early in the session is benefits and drawbacks to running a business um, because you know we all know that business isn't easy um, you know Laura has told us already about her dedication you know her perseverance and the way that she kept coming back it didn't matter how many times those people at Topshop didn't get back to her you know she kept going until someone did um, and I think what a lot of us want is a, a career that we enjoy something that uses our skills, something that pays us a good salary, um, and is also something that you can balance around the other elements of your life. Um, and business can be quite hard to juggle because you know you are going to be the person who's there all the time. There might not be time to switch off. Um, so we need to look at that and see how you can weigh up what will be the benefits and what will be the drawbacks for you. So I want you to take just a minute or two to think about those pros and cons and maybe drop some into the chat box um, so that we can maybe talk through them. Um, you know, is there something specific that has put you off so far that you think, oh, that's the bit that's scaring me and it's, it's you know, such a drawback that I haven't taken the first step? I just want a moment for you to, um, to think about that and maybe drop a question in 
And all of the comments that we have, they're going to be anonymous unless you don't want them to be. Um, so it's really helpful if you can share something because it's an opportunity for us to help everyone who's in on this call together. Hi Sarah, yeah, we've got some coming through now. Do you want me to read them out to you? That would be really great, thank you. Okay, so one um, so one con would be, what if I run out of ideas? How do I keep things fresh? Um, and then we have another, I am concerned about childcare. Um, they, they, my baby is two and now I need some space and time. And I know I need space and time, sorry. Uh, pros, freedom, hard work and dedication, rewarded, cons, lack of confidence. So, you know, there are obvious barriers for women, um, confidence and childcare, I think they're ones we really have to talk about. You know, Laura showed quite a lot of confidence, which was really good. Um, and I think that what you need to do and, and what we all need to do together is to practice our confidence because the what, what the things that you tell yourself you know that's how you feel if you can cons consistently tell yourself that you're not confident about something then you're not going to increase that confidence and we are going to work on a couple of things that will help you to do that um when it comes to childcare, that is something that i personally had to deal with and you know this year is particularly hard for a lot of small business people because, um, you know, a lot for anyone in work because, you know, nurseries have been closed, schools have been closed. And so I think that one thing that you are able to do and, and people are you know, very appreciative of after the experience that we've had this year is that sometimes you might need to do a business meeting with a baby on your lap. You, know, you might need to work at times um, when you your, your, your child is sleeping. Um, when I first set up my business, my daughter was um, four months old and I she would have a good solid hour or two hours sometimes of a nap. And so I would use those two hours to grab a cuppa, grab something to eat and sit there and work through my ideas and my business plan. You know, and it took a long time because all I had was those two hours a few days a week. And um, it, it probably took me at least six to eight weeks to get that business plan together because that was the time I had. So I think you do need to think about not being unfair on yourself. Don't put undue pressure on yourself. Um, you know, not everyone is going to have the experience that Laura's had of, you know, a really quick success in turnaround. Sometimes it will take a bit longer um, depending on the personal experiences that you have. I don't know if there's any any more, Emma, that any pros maybe of why people really want to go into business? Uh, yes, you have one pro. You can do it at any age. I am 60 and I am struggling to get interviewers to look past that. Uh, it's a bit of a pro and a con, really. The age thing. Yeah, that's a really uh, big one. I think, yeah. you know, there's a lot of great experience that people can bring in from having, you know, previous work experience and, you know, my mum actually was the same. She um, was sick of not getting to you know, not getting the job because of her age, and she set up a business um, making soap, which is something that she loved to do as a hobby. So it's it's drawing on different things really, and, and utilizing something that's a con and turning it into a pro. Absolutely, uh, we have another pro: get out of comfort zone and grow oneself. Yes. Yeah, I think definitely comfort zones you know it's easy to to not take that first step because you want to stay in that comfort zone and you don't have to go to the bank tomorrow and you know apply for a ten thousand pound loan that's pushing yourself too far that's in in you know into a panic zone rather than a than a pushing yourself but what you want to do is just take those small steps that will stretch your confidence and build you up um so they are some of the things that we can do today um, absolutely uh, there's one more pro which I just thought was a really good one. I thought to share it with you. Pride and yeah. passion in, achieve, in, in achieving my dream. I think that's quite a, a nice one to end it on. Oh, passion. Passion is something that we have to really um, stick to and really focus on because, you know, 
the reason you do things are because of the values that you hold inside and because of the passions that you have. You know, would Laura be staying up until 11 o'clock on Instagram if she wasn't passionate, that she wanted girls to feel positive and not to go through the experience of anxiety that she had? Um, thank you. This is really great so far. I hope it's been helpful to you. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is what it is that you really want from your job. Um, so passion's perfect because that is on this list of kind of examples. You know, this was a question that was asked to people who were going into business. 40% um, said that they wanted to pursue a passion that they had. 52% um, said they wanted to be their own boss. You know, there's, there's a lot of talk about being flexible, about having balance in work and having time with your family. Um, and a lot of people said it's because they wanted to grow their income. I know that um, a lot of the places that I work in Wales, um, delivering community courses, there just isn't the job opportunities available in many areas. And we know that that is, that, that is something that's you know, got, got a lot worse for some people, particularly for women in lockdown. You know, there isn't going to be jobs in the high street. And so how do we create those opportunities for ourselves so that we can have the income that we need to support ourselves and our families? Um, so I would like you to just spend a couple of minutes thinking and maybe drop some ideas into the chat box on what what are the two or three most important things that you want or you need from your work and and, and why you think that you could get those things out of running a business for yourself rather than going into employment. Once you've gone through a few, then we'll talk about them and I'll give you a few examples of, of my own reasons as well. So they're just coming in now, Sarah. Uh, we have got being valued, independent, independent, fulfillment and purpose. Purpose, that's a really good one. I quite often have an argument with my husband over how the work that I do has to have a purpose, whereas, you know, his brain is very much more um, of sees work as an exchange. You know, he goes and he does the job he needs to do. It doesn't particularly matter what it is. And as long as he gets paid and can support his family with that, you know, I think we all have different reasons. But quite often people who go into business, it is because of their values and what they what they feel inside. They want to pursue a passion. They want to help other people. We've got a few more working the hours I want and getting paid for my skills instead of minimum wage. And we have another one being in control of my own destiny. I love that one. I think definitely being paid for your skills, um, you know, and it's it's making sure that you when you pitch your business that you, um, you know, you teach people to appreciate what those skills are because you know I, I don't know whether anyone saw the tv shows earlier in, in the year of um the factories selling cheap clothes you know there are many reasons that we all need cheap clothes but that has instilled um people to think that they don't you know that the clothes can and should be made cheaply when you know if you design something from scratch yourself that's much more expensive and that comes for the same with a lot of products even a bar of soap or a bath bomb when that's hand created there's a lot more time and money that goes into that than something that's created in a factory with um you know maybe overseas or you know something that isn't done by someone with their passion and love um a couple from me, I, I particularly, you know, as you can see from the examples that I've given you, um, one of the reasons that I wanted to go into business was because I couldn't find anything um, that suited my skills and was flexible. Um, and I think that that's, that's come up quite a lot. People want to work the hours that suit them and they want to feel valued in the job that they do. You know, a lot of people who work part time, you know, just because you're working part time hours, it doesn't mean that you're giving part time effort. And I think that that can sometimes affect people and, and drive them to want to do something for themselves. 
So what I want you to do is make sure that you're taking a note of these, but you know, afterwards I will give you a copy of the slides so that you can use some of these pointers to work through these reasons of what it is that you particularly want to get out of work and how you think that you can get that out of running a business for yourself. Moving on, I wanted to just mention a few more brilliant women who inspire me and um, who started their businesses with really simple ideas. Um, the first person here on, on these slides is Maggie. She runs Maggie's Exotic Foods. Um, and she studied food, that was her background and her knowledge, and, and she wanted to use her expertise and provide something to her local community in Penagroyce. And um, she also wanted to utilize her African heritage and, and how she'd been inspired about food and cooking from her Welsh mum. And, and I think for her, she said when I spoke to her that, you know, there just wasn't the opportunity where she lived to use some of those skills that she had. So she had to come up with something herself. So she um, operates her local business out of the Red Lion pub. And she found that space after cooking food in local farmers markets. She's developed a range of sauces and chutneys, and now she's even expanding into hair products. Um, and she's made a hair custard that suits hair that's specific to hers. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a huge idea, and it can be something that someone else is already doing. Um, Lisa is a wonderful example. I, I was really struggling to find a picture of her, but I will ask um, the, an organisation called Purple Shoots, who gave her the funds to set up her business, if we could have a picture or maybe a chat with her at some point, because um, she's quite an inspiring woman. Um, she became, um, what well, she has four children, and one of her sons became ill with a brain tumour, which meant that work was impossible. Um, you know, going in and out of hospital, supporting her son and her other children meant that her husband lost his job as well, um, because of the amount of time off that they had to have. So life was a struggle for them, and you know, they were living on benefits. There was no money available to set up a business at the wonderful point when Lisa's son was becoming more well and able to go back to school. Um, so she went to Purple Shoots, which is an organisation that supports people who want to go into business across Wales, um, giving them small amounts of money as loans. Um, and it's normally people who wouldn't get a bank loan. Um, you know, maybe they're on, on benefits or maybe they have had a, a bad credit rating. Um, but they're the kind of people that Purple Shoots support. Um, and so with the money that she borrowed, she found a premises on Penagraig High Street um, and she was able to rent out that premises. Now, that's the case um, on her products every single day. Um, you know, that's a new business as well. It's something that she's only done in the last year or so. And, you know, to the point where I was told when I spoke with Purple Shoes that um, she was able to give out meals to children who needed them during the school holidays recently. Um, so not only is she able to do something to help her family and support her family, um, she's also able to give back to her community. Um, and the final person that we have there is Rachel Flanagan. And she runs um, a cleaning company called Mrs. Bucket. I love the company because I think it's a brilliant name. And she was just 18 when she borrowed her mum's mop and bucket and she had 20 pounds where she printed out flyers um, and now her cleaning company, Mrs. Bucket, is a franchise business and it's worth over two and a half million pounds. You know, we know that there are lots of cleaners out there. We know that, um, you know, that isn't something new, but she had an original way that she could bring something to that, that area of work. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. It isn't about, you know, ideas that um, you know have to be different we've always had cleaners we're always going to need cleaners and so it, it's a business that is viable and if you want to bring your passion to it that's something that you can do um i did want to talk about whether running a business is for you um, and I know we've touched on it before, but I think it's important that we do um, mention some of those highs and lows, because um, 
you know, it is about hustling. It is about, um, you know, being resilient and, you know, constantly coming back when you, when you have knockbacks. But, you know, and, that, and that's no different to going for interviews or putting in job applications. You know, it, we have to build resilience in what we do. Um, and so, you know, don't think that because you don't have much of that resilience right now that you need to go and do something else. Um, it's something that we need to all practice and build. And, you know, it, and it is easy because the more you do something, the more resilient that you become. Um, one thing that is really great is the rewards of seeing your idea and your business grow. And you could see that um, passion and that reward in Laura, I think, which was, um, I, I found that quite inspirational. Um, you know, you're able to make a difference to other people. And what would be really lovely is to maybe look to some of the young people that Laura is inspiring. Um, you know, there's always people that um, are inspired by your business and, you know, just helping one person can spread out joy and kindness and good things. And quite often that's what small business is all about. It's about our community. On, on the more difficult side, you know, we do have to remember that the buck stops with you. Um, one of the reasons I said before that I went into business is because I wanted something flexible that would fit around having young children. Um, what I quickly realised is that um, I had no one to cover me if my child was sick. So quite often it would be my husband who had a, a guaranteed salary. He'd have to take a sick day or he'd have to say, you know, I'm going to have to build up my hours later in the week because, you know, if my child was sick today, I wouldn't be able to say to all of you, sorry, I can't make it. You know, there are highs and lows to balance in some of those things. But what you can do is think about what some of those um, issues will be and put plans in place to support them. Um, you know, whether it be in an emergency that there's a friend who can help you out, um, you know, whether you have a partner who's able to pick up some of those things and um, maybe have a think about and, and maybe drop into the chat. Is, is there something that, you know, you think could be a particular difficulty? And, you know, we can ask everyone to help us come up with ways that you can overcome that difficulty. Is there anything coming up or is that a bit of a struggle, Emma, do you think? Uh, there isn't any coming up at the moment, but, you know, I think whilst, the, whilst our attendees are thinking about these, um, these questions, I would just, yeah, just like to echo, you know, the importance of having those chats with women running those businesses and having those female role models as well. And that's why we invited Laura to, to share her story today. And on the next session, we, we have... To, two more case studies joining us, Sarah, which is um, really exciting. We have Dr. Yumna Mohammed, who um, set up a, a natural hair care product. Um, so she's going to be sharing, you know, sharing the reasons why she got into business, why she set up a business, why she set up a business, why she felt that there wasn't products available for her in the market. Um, so yeah, just, um, and the other person joining us on next week, Sarah, is, um, Oh gosh, remind me. Oh, why have I got blank? It all oh, comes to This is from Black Yeah, this is Stacey, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry, it's Stacey oh. joining us next week, isn't it? Stacey, yeah, amazing. Yeah, she is um she's brilliant and I won't share any more because I think it's something that is quite an, an exciting person who can maybe help to talk about some of those highs and lows actually maybe that's one thing I will ask her to do um, because you know she is a, a young a mum with young children and she's gone through some of these difficulties and these highs and lows so she'll be able to share some of those things um, if nothing's come up on that then we can always come back to it and move on I've got to one okay got one, that's actually come through. Um, one attendee just mentioning um, that they find social media quite difficult, they're quite, they're quite slow in learning how to use social media and I think technology is changing at such a fast pace, it is quite difficult for us all to keep up isn't it? Um, so yeah, Sarah, what do you, how, how do you feel about 
social media? Social media can be really tricky. Um, you know, and I, but I think Laura, coming back to her actually, she said at the start that she felt that social media was something that scared her, um, but she's jumped into it and is now, you know, it is probably one of the reasons that she is successful. Um, but part of what I see from her social media is that she has a really strong brand. You know, she understood, she knew what she wanted to share. Um, she knew how the personal part of her product and the reasons behind it and you know sharing positive messages for young girls and you know talking about anxiety and overcoming anxiety i think if you if you remember why you've gone into business and you know what it is that's really important to you about your product and you show that on your social media um, then that's the way to to kind of get through that and ask for help there are a lot of people out there there's a lot of experts who will, who will give workshops like this that are free online um and, and you can access some of those what i might do is put together a list of some of the ones that i use um because they're you know they're really simple ones like i attended a, a 30 minute workshop a few weeks ago run by um a woman who is in you know she's a, a businesswoman that supports other women in business and it was how to take really good photos um i'm never that very good at photos it's very much um, a case of just you know trying to get a nice picture of the children when they're doing something that isn't scrapping um, and so i wanted to know how to take good photos that would you know show what my business is show what the kind of things that i wanted to talk about you know how to bring in color and brand into those things there's always a workshop out there that is the joy of the internet at the moment um and you know again like laura said google if there is something i don't know how to do i just simply say google how do i put a story on instagram and there'll be a guide in how to do that do you think there's anything um that you could assist with emma because i know that Coratega are really good on social media yeah do you know what we used to run a really good session on the Again, set up on LinkedIn, and I actually, one of my colleagues, Kat, she's an absolute wizard with with LinkedIn. So I'm sure there's, there's something that we could we could definitely do there in the future is maybe set up a session on how we can, um, you know, create the, the best social media accounts and building our own brand as well. So I will have a chat to Kat if she's listening. Kat, I'm coming for you. Um, yeah, we can. I'm sure we can definitely set something up there. Uh, it's a really good idea. We've had a few more come through. Um, before COVID, I wanted to do one-to-one -one life coaching, but now you know, Zoom is the best way forward to reach people from a distance. I have done all the training in the 18 months before COVID. Uh, bear with me. Yeah, she's already done all the training. So fantastic. So there's the, there's the, where there's a will, there's a way. Definitely. Uh, and that's great. I mean, Zoom is brilliant for people like that because um, you know, not only are they able to to kind of get that one-to-one -one connection with your clients, um, but you don't have the travel time involved, which is, you know, don't don't overload yourself. I know a lot of people say that they can get zoomed out, um, but if you're not traveling from client to client, or they're not having to come to you, then, you know, there's an instant benefit that you can sell. Absolutely, and recognizing what platforms work for you as well, and not everything is gonna kind of tick your boxes. Um, I know Quartier, everything yeah. that we deliver has kind of moved online and we're, you know, we're navigating the world of technology and figuring out what works best for us for delivery. And I'm, I'm sure that goes for um, individual businesses as well, but the platforms that best yeah. reach their customer base as well. So not all social media channels are going to be applicable, perhaps. So just figuring no, out what works for you. I think social media in particular is one of those things that you need to jump in and have a go um, rather than being put off and thinking oh I just don't know how this works you know, the best way to learn is on the job so if you want to use Twitter you know set up an account you don't have to put pictures on you don't have to you know put yourself out there but you can just take part and talk to other people and follow other people and see what they do you know learn from people who you, who you admire who you think are doing it well and, and ask them for help because quite often people will be able to give you tips and support on things that you want to do. I want to move on quickly because I did say that we would have a break. 
but there's something I just wanted people to start thinking about before we did have five minutes to just stretch or grab a cuppa or nip to the loo. Um, and that is strengths and weaknesses. I would like everyone to be really honest. You know, this is something for you. It isn't something that you're going to have to share with the world. So I want you to grab up your pen and paper and start to make a list. You know, what are the things that you think are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? Um, and this is something that you can also ask other people because you, you, you might learn some interesting things. Um, I've been working on a project with some people recently and we did a 360 review process where we had the opportunity to share with everyone what we thought that they were good at. Um, and I was surprised that the main thing that came back from everybody was um, how nurturing they think I am. And I'd never thought about that myself, but when I looked through the things that I'd done and the things that brought me joy in the work that I do, it is that nurturing of other people. Um, and that's, that comes through in the work that I do because you know delivering workshops, supporting people, it is about nurturing people to be their best. Um, I just never, never thought about that and never put it down as a strength that I realised that I had. If there's maybe one or two that people want to share, and we'll talk about them before we do take a quick break. Whilst they're coming in, Sarah, there was um, another another query um, about the, pr the previous question, asking about disability, dyslexia, and using online can be an issue. Yeah, yeah, it can. Um, you know, but I'll come back to that because there's someone I've um, I wanted to mention later on, who who has been inspired to go into business because of exactly that reason, because of her dyslexia. So if we could hold on that one, I will come back to it. Okay, no problem. Just wait for them to come through. Here we go, we've got some. Um, just make this bigger. I plan and plan until it is the perfect plan, but then I don't get the plan going. I feel you, I know this one. I have endless, intricate business ideas in my brain. Um, some of them I will write down on paper over a coffee, but taking that step, you know, that is the thing. If you just take that first little step, you know, that's that's what will launch your business. Um, and it is about building your confidence and you know, just thinking, what's one small step I could take today? Um, but hold on that because we will come back to that as well. If there's maybe one or two more, and then we will have a quick break. Okay, yeah, I've got another one. Lack of belief sometimes and public speaking is a couple of weaknesses. Public speaking. Um, yeah, again. Lack, lack, lack of belief in public speaking. Yeah. Okay, so lack of belief is, is something that we teach ourselves. You know, it, definitely in Britain, we're, we're told that we, you know, we never... When you look at other people in other countries, like in America, they're really great at, you know, selling themselves and saying what they do and how great they do things. But, you know, I don't think that, you know, we or in our culture or or even as women, you know, we're not told to celebrate how brilliant we are at things. Um, and there are small things you can do. So, you know, I keep a note on my desk and I'll, I'll send a picture and I'll put it online later. Um, and every day I try and write myself a note that I can then read out to myself. Um, and I've got a pile on my desk because I keep them pinned on the wall so I can see them throughout the day. Um, you know, we're working at home quite a lot at the moment. So one thing that I have is a note that reminds me that I'm doing great because there's no one around to tell me that. Um, another one that I've written is to stay focused and to do one thing at a time. Um, you know, that comes back to planning and planning. I think you can plan a lot, um, but then you get overwhelmed by those huge plans. And so you don't take the step to actually put in those plans into action. Um, so if you stay focused and you pick one thing that you want to achieve in that day, all of a sudden you've done that one big thing and then the next thing will follow and the next thing will follow. Um, 
another one that I've got on my desk today because I was quite nervous about doing this actually um, and it says I can do anything that I set my mind to and it might sound silly to just write yourself these little notes but they really do work because the more you tell yourself positive things the more your brain will in turn and um, repeat those positive um, moments and and give you that belief that you feel that you're lacking um, coming on to public speaking that is something that you, again is is what you you can do through practice you know any opportunity that you have take it i when i was in university in my early 20s i had to do a presentation for a course and i was nervous and shaking and holding the piece of paper in front of my face and it was horrendous it was probably one of the worst things i've ever done um, and then a few years ago, I was invited to go to the Philippines, um, where I spent three months telling people in the Philippines how brilliant Wales is. It sounds like an amazing gig, and it was. It was absolutely wonderful. But I also had to give presentations to people every single day. And it could be 10 people in a community hall, or it could be half a million people on a TV show. Um, and that was one of the worst ones I had to do. And I haven't shared it with anyone, but maybe it'll be the brave thing I do in coronavirus is to put a copy of that video online of me in you know, the most horrendous stage makeup going on the Philippines version of GMTV, um, Good Morning Philippines. And, um, and just before we went on to talk about Wales, they said, what were we going to perform? And we had to perform a song um, because Philippines is all about song and dance and and they celebrate life in that way. So with about five minutes notice, we had to s sing a Welsh song and I'm not a Welsh speaker um, on what is the equivalent of, you know, good, bo good morning Britain. So public speaking is just about throwing yourself into it, maybe not to that extreme, but definitely just to get out there, talk to people, even if it's just two or three people that you could stand in front of or, you know, share your business idea around a coffee table or over a Zoom chat, then the more you practice it, the better you'll get. So I'm going to leave us a quick five minute break on that. So literally, if we could come back, five minutes will be 12 minutes past. Um, so it's just a chance for you to, to shake up and grab a cuppa or a glass of water um, and then we'll come back and go through the next task. I will see you very shortly. See you soon.
Okay, we'll just give it a minute for people to come back in. Um, and then I've got a short video to show you. So it means that if, if anyone if anyone's kettle takes longer than five minutes to boil, then they've got a bit of an opportunity to, to rush back whilst that video shows, because it's something that, again, you'll have a link to if you want to see it later as well. You were able to tune it out, Sarah. No one's better to tell you what's involved in the skills you need than entrepreneurs. So, if you want to know what you need to do to be successful or win, attitude, creativity, relationships, and organization. So, let's take a look at this. Not going the way you'd like them to. Be confident in your ideas, believe in yourself, and persevere. It's your determination to see things through that will make things happen. What about creativity? Well, think of it as solving a problem. All you need is a little imagination, look at something with a fresh pair of eyes, think a bit differently, and bingo, you've done it. Just come up with a brilliant new idea. So take a look around and ask yourself, how can I make that just that bit better? Tap into that brilliant imagination that you have and off you go. Okay, now relationships. Running a business is definitely a people thing. Having a good relationship with your customers, employees, buyers, partners, and other businesses is essential for success. Be willing to talk to everyone and listen to what they have to say. The more people you know, the easier it will be for you to use your powers of persuasion and get things done. And lastly, organization. To get to grips with the day-to-day -day running of a business, good organization skills are essential. You need to understand how to raise finance, manage your money, and deal with tax. You need to set up systems to make your business tick, from IT systems to planning and record keeping. The more organized you are, the smoother things you run. Yes, there's a lot to consider, but many entrepreneurs told us that they asked friends, family, colleagues, and professionals for help along the way, so you're not alone. Starting a business is an exciting adventure, full of new experiences, some highs, some lows, some tough decisions and a lot of hard work. But as an entrepreneur, the power is in your hands. Just tap into that imagination of yours, be positive, be friendly, be organized, and you'll surely be very successful. For inspiration and information on becoming Wales' next young entrepreneur, visit Big Ideas Wales. Okay, so hopefully we are back to our presentation. Um, and now whilst that was aimed at young people, I love that video because I think it's, you know, a really rounded view of the skills that you need to be an entrepreneur. And, you know, it's, it's one of those words. I remember going to a conference and it was for women in business and there were 500 women in the room and everyone put their hand up and said, the speaker said everyone put their hand up if they called themselves an entrepreneur and out of those 500 people only one woman put her hand up because you know we don't want to be seen as as something that often you know it, it's a word that doesn't fit with women you know I don't know how you feel about that maybe it's something that you'd like to share One of the things that um, 
I wanted to come back to what we were talking about before we had a break. Um, well, the things that you enjoy, because if you're going to be in business, it has to be based on things that you love to do. Um, there's no point, you know, if you do really hate public speaking, you know, setting yourself up as a public speaker or a teacher, because, you know, you're going to be finding every day difficult um, and you'll be wanting to do something else or, you know, find ways to sabotage yourself. Um, you've got to be doing a business that you love. You know, maybe you really enjoy cooking. Maybe you um, do really enjoy public speaking. Maybe you love to work and focus on your own and you could support another business in a different way. Um, maybe you do love social media and you think that that's something that you could turn into a business. Um, so that's something that I do want you to start thinking about. You know, what do you enjoy about life? What do you want more out of? And how can your idea bring that out in you? Um, but it's also thinking about things that you don't enjoy. Um, you know, I love that picture in the middle because, um, you know, Dolly Parton is amazing, especially this year. And the nine to five. Some people really don't like the nine to five. They want to work at a time that suits them. You know, I know a lot of people who, you know, they're night owls. They work better in the evening. And maybe your business is something that you don't need to be open in office hours, that you can work at hours that suit you best. You know, maybe it's to do with the disability that you might have, that you need to work at a time that best suits your health. You know, some of those things you can think about that you can, it isn't just about what you enjoy, but it's about turning the barriers that you might have into a way that works well for you. Um, particularly, I don't like email. Email is the nemesis of my life. I prefer to be doing real things rather than seeing, you know, back and forth emails as work. But one thing I do enjoy is technology. So I found different methods of technology that I can use to get the people I work with um, to talk with me without having back and forth emails. And there's some really good tools out there that can help you in business, um, which is maybe something that we could talk through at some point if people are interested. Um, I wanted to talk about how there is that entrepreneur. You know, it doesn't matter about the word. There is an entrepreneur inside all of us. You know, maybe you're a busy mum. You know, maybe you really balancing at home, at having a limited food in the fridge that you can turn into any kind of meal. You know, there's a creativity in that. There's, you know, there's skills that you can pull anything out of the bag. Maybe you're an artist, um, and if you make pictures, then you've got to. Um, you know, you've got to buy in a product, you have got to um, buy those tools, produce a piece, present that piece to other people, you know, sell that product. And there are lots of different ways that people are entrepreneurs without realising that they are. Um, and I think that a lot of women maybe don't realise those skills that they do have. So I want you to start thinking about your skills and how you can utilise those skills maybe ones that you're not even aware of. You know, you could talk to um, people that you've worked with in the past, maybe some of your friends or, um, you know, mums on the school run that, that see you in a different way to, that you see yourself. And they could be able to share with you things that, that skills that they think you have. I want to introduce you to Christine. She's going to kill me because this isn't the best photo of either of us. I don't know why I was wearing that dress because it looks hideous. But more importantly, um, Christine is someone that I met in the early days of setting up my business when I was working on delivering um, training courses for people to be inspired to get back to work. And I was working with Taff Housing Association and I was quite nervous at the time because it was one of the first courses that I delivered. Um, but Christine is someone who has stayed in my heart for a long, long time. When I first met her back in 2016, maybe, um, she said that she was just a mum. She hadn't done anything for 10 years and, um, and there was nothing that she could do. She didn't know how she was going to get back into work because she'd just done nothing. Um, and what, over the, the six weeks that we worked together, um, what I realized is that she hadn't put any value on all of the things that she had done outside of her paid work. Um, this is Christine. She was 
one of the finalists in Qualitex Women's Women's Buyer Awards in 2019. And that doing nothing, you know, what we pulled out of her is that she had founded a support group for families of drug users. You know, women like her, she said she got to the point where she was tearing her hair out because of the situation at home. And so she founded this group, which she called Tearing Your Hair Out. And she'd been running that group, which was the only support group for parents in Cardiff of, um, you know, family members who had addiction in in South Wales at one point, and she'd run that for over a decade. Um, I love her story because it really tells me and reminds me of why I'm in business when I'm having bad days and you know I'm not getting paid quick enough by clients, then I'm reminded of people like her and how inspired they make me feel to keep doing what I do. Um, but at the same time, I think it's important for a lot of women to see themselves um, because Christine didn't. She didn't see herself as anything more than, you know, those dreaded words, just a mum. No one is just a mum. Um, you know, being a mum is a wonderful thing. Um, and also she, you know, she didn't see all of those things that other people were valuing in her. She needed someone else to hold up that mirror and remind her that there was a lot of things that she'd done. Um, so I want you to just take a moment and to think about things that you have done in your life, you know, over the past six months, over the past 10 years, maybe share with us so that Emma can, um, you know, read some of them out to inspire other people. What are those things that, that you've done that you maybe hadn't realised that you could bring to business or that just make you feel proud of yourselves? Did you ever meet Christine, Emma? No, I didn't, unfortunately. Um, I'm not sure which year. Do you know which year Christine won that award? I think she was a finest in 2019, but don't quote me on that. Ah, OK. No, I didn't. I didn't come across Christine. But yeah, a great story and just goes to show that, like you say, there is absolutely an idea in us all to come up with yeah. something and the skill set that we have. Um, so we have a comment from one of our attendees um, who has supported and listened to friends and relatives in isolation, picking up their spirits. Oh, that's amazing, isn't it? And, and that is definitely something that you can turn into a business or can help to spark a business idea. You know, even if it's just going back to those people and saying, you know, can you can you do me a favour and be there for me and listen to me as I share some of my business ideas? You know, it's having those people to bounce ideas off is really important. Absolutely, Sarah. I couldn't agree more there. Um, and it just, I think Laura is living proof of what you can achieve in, in you know, really difficult years, just 2020. Definitely, definitely, I think. And there are so many others out there. Um, I'm going to move on quickly because I'm concerned that we will run out of time if I don't keep moving, because um, there's still a few things I really want to cover with people today. Um, so one thing I want you to do is grab your pen and paper, do your best artwork or just draw around your hand like I do. Um, and I would like you to literally draw around your hand on a piece of paper. And whilst you do that, I'm going to talk you through this next activity. Um, I want you to start thinking about how brilliant you are, how strong you are um, and how we don't always see some of those great things that we have done. So I want you to take a couple of minutes to reflect on your achievements. It could be something huge, could be something really simple. You know, think about, you know, what you've done this week. Is it just that you've come onto this call today um, when normally you'd be too nervous or you'd find reasons not to come on? You know, is there something you've done in the last year? Maybe it was 10 years ago and it still makes you feel really proud. I want you to take the time um, to think about those achievements, you know, and to draw those around that hand, to start thinking of this as a way to high five yourself. Um, what are those things that make you feel um, great, that make you feel that you've done something courageous? 
as you're doing that, I also want you to look at yourself through the eyes of a friend or someone who loves you. Um, and think about some of the ideas that they would put onto this. You know, things that they think are brilliant about you, achievements that that you have um, had that that they think are really great that maybe you wouldn't have realised yourself. Um, it can be quite hard to be positive about yourself. And I think as women, we can find this really hard to celebrate ourselves. Um, so try and think, on the other hand, what you would say to someone else in a similar position. You know, what are the ways that you would tell someone else that they're great or they're brilliant? And then if you feel that you'd like to, um, maybe drop one or two of those into the chat so that we can inspire other people into some of those ideas. What I wanted to do is share my own um, because I don't like to celebrate myself. I'm much more of the kind of person who will hide behind my computer, get my job done, um, you know, shout about other people and how brilliant they are. But I've never been in the practice of saying that about myself. So I wanted to do this and I did it beforehand um, before we did this, this session um, because I thought that if I was going to ask you to do something, then I had to do it myself. Um, and some of the things that I realised over the years that I had done um, is, is actually quite huge and it's made me feel quite proud. Um, so overcoming maternity discrimination, you know, if you lose a job or if you're out of work, it, it can be a massive trauma. And I remember the days when I was stood in my kitchen sobbing, probably still hormonal from not long in having a baby. but. You know, I turned that into a positive and it enabled me to set up a business, to do lots of things I never thought I would do. Um, and so that is quite a great achievement. And it's something that I hadn't had, hadn't looked back on to really give myself that high five. Um, one thing I have like to do is to try and challenge myself to do things to make me a bit healthier rather than sitting on my bum behind a desk or you know having biscuits with every cup of tea um so i ran a half marathon and i had the extra little push of i wanted to do it before my husband signed up and did it because he would always be able to run faster than me but i can always say that i ran a cardiff half marathon before he got the chance to um and that was really hard you know you had to take the time to train every week and you had to build up the strength to run further and further um i had gone from being someone who could barely run a 5k to you know achieving that half marathon and and if you set yourself goals and it doesn't have to be running you know maybe your goal is your business and that is your marathon it's all about taking little steps every day that you can then build into something that you can look back on and feel it's a big achievement um is there anything come through that anybody would like to share? Yeah, there's a few coming through. Um, and I just, yeah, I just wanted to thank you for doing this exercise really, Sarah, because I think it's so important. And, uh, and I think particularly for women, we, we're not very good at being vocal about our achievements. So it's great to, to have this time to reflect about um, some of the things that we have achieved. So some of the things coming through, um, kept going even when I um, was a victim of bullying at work. Um, got myself a mentor to help me set up business and joined an, an, an abundance club to help grow, to help my growth and personal uh, development, which has been awesome. So much positivity and growth through difficult times. Um, another one, kept going with job application after job application, getting very few interviews, ending up in second place and still keeping going, looking for jobs, writing applications. Yeah, that's a really hard one. Um, I was 
I was talking to someone recently who took a redundancy before COVID and um, you know they thought that they would just jump into the next job and they said it was 75 applications until they got that job um, you know and, and you do have to keep going and it is hard but you have got to take time to think how proud you should be of constantly bouncing back to those things um, you know you can almost be on a hamster wheel can't you with job applications or with setting yourself up in a business and I think if you have got to make sure that every now and again you stop and have a rest and and, and thank yourself for for giving yourself the time to do you know, to constantly do those things and to keep bouncing back so that's a really great one and as for having a mentor I think that's brilliant everyone needs a mentor it's all about having someone who's a cheerleader who can hold up that mirror to you when you don't you know maybe you don't see the the person in the mirror that you want to um maybe it would be interesting to see if anyone else has a mentor or if they know where they could find one Is there any way that Quarateg are able to connect people with mentors or is that something that maybe could be looked at, do you think? Uh, absolutely. You know, there's we haven't got anything at the moment in an official capacity, but what I've been doing, Sarah, is you know, if people get in touch with us and they really want to meet with a mentor, and if they can just drop me an email, let me know, you know, the sort of field that they're looking for, the interest, then uh, we can have a think at Quarateg then of who we could um, potentially match you up with. So nothing official, but we we tend to do it as a just case by case kind of basis, really, because there's all we you know we've got a, a, a massive contact of um, contact database of women that we work with, and there's so many so many great role models and potential mentors on there um, that we'd be happy to signpost people to so if you are considering getting the mentor um, just drop me an email and you know we can definitely look into that for you that's amazing I think that's you know that's the wonder that Quiretech has isn't it is that you're able to connect people that you know if I sat here and thought where would I find a mentor you've got all of those different connections with people who could be helpful to someone in different situations that they have Absolutely. So as people are doing this for themselves, is there anything else coming through? Yeah, there's one more coming through. Um, support for my children, support as dyslexic. So any anything we could, we could discuss there, Sarah, around dyslexia and overcoming the issues that that presents? Um, was that supporting her children who have dyslexia or is it her own dyslexia maybe i think it's her own dyslexia okay there's a woman i want to mention in a short while um who is quite an inspiration of how she um was struggling with dyslexia and then was able to turn that into a business opportunity so i will come to that one thing i did want to mention now whilst we're on this exercise is how when when you start to do this exercise for yourself, and maybe it's something that you want to do over a cup of tea on your own later today or later this week, um, you can start to connect some of these things that you've achieved to your personal values. Um, and your values are really important because they're what drive you internally into doing really well in the business that you have. Um, you know, coming back to mine, for example, some of my values are about being healthy. There is um, disability in my family, and I know that um, I can't take my health for granted. So I try to make sure that I continue to be healthy in my life because there are other people in my, my life that aren't able, they don't have that opportunity. Um, family is really important. So for me, you know, I wanted to remind myself that I'm proud of raising children and they're healthy and happy children. Um, being determined. Again, that comes back to a marathon. It can also be campaigning. Um, I do a lot of campaigning. There's one campaign this afternoon that's going to be in the Senate, um, talking about the maternity restrictions during coronavirus. Um, you know, whether it's running a marathon, a campaign is quite similar. So is running um, a business campaign. You need to know what your goals are and what you want to achieve. And you've got to constantly push and constantly find different ways to bring that to people's attention um, 
you know, you've got to be really determined with those things. Um, one of the things that I love is connecting with people. And that's why I do a lot of campaigning, because I love to talk to people. I love to meet them and find out their stories. Um, so all of those things really fit together when when you when you start to realize realize what your achievements are, you realize that you know you're driven to do them because of the values that you have as a person. Um, I'm going to run past one activity and I think we'll come back to it next week because I don't want to run out of time. Um, but what I do want to do is have an opportunity for people to start to talk about and generate ideas because not everyone on this call is going to um, is going to have their perfect business idea right now. It could be that they're intrigued and they wanted to join into this because they you know, maybe you want to be in business, but you don't quite know what that idea is. So what I'd like you to do is take a few minutes just to think about the problems in your community. You know, what are the things that you could solve? What's missing from your high street that you think is needed? Um, to start to think about the skills that you have that could turn into a profitable business. You know, Rachel Flanagan, her skills were as simple as she was a really good cleaner, but she's turned that into a hugely profitable business with just 20 quid to get some flyers. You know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's just about using the skills we have and taking the leap to see if we can make money out of, out of doing something with them. I will send you these questions because this is something that is quite fast that we're going through now, but you will have the questions to come back to and do this in your own time. I want you to think about who you admire in business and what you could offer that that business doesn't. You know, there are loads of different businesses doing great things, but maybe you've looked at one that you think, I really like that business. I'd love to do something like that but I would do it in a really different way. You know, and just start to write some of those things down because your idea is, is only ever an idea until you commit it to paper. Um, I wanted to talk through some different businesses and this is where I'm gonna come back to some of the, the points that were made earlier. Um, these are all businesses, mostly in Wales. Um, Noala is one particular um, who isn't in Wales, but I think her business is such a success because she is a hairdresser. As you can see, she has curly hair and she'd realized, she'd found a gap in the market that there wasn't a salon that was tailored to curly hair. So she became the expert. She knew how her hair was impacted by different haircuts and by different colours, by the products, because she'd been a hairdresser for a long time. And so she trained up her other staff in her salon to be experts in cutting and colouring curly hair too. Um, I started to follow her over the lockdown and I realised that her business is so successful because she has set herself up as you know, the person that supports people with curly hair that you can't just call and book an appointment. You have to fill out a form and they get back to you over a certain number of months because she's that inundated with business. So, you know, there might be 10 hair salons in your local area, but if you could see a gap, then, then find a way to fill it. And I think Noala is a really good person who filled that. But what I'll do when I send you out the slides to Emma is I'll add some links so you can find some of these people yourself. Um, you know, there's one picture there that's of a plastic free shop and um, you'll see quite a few of these popping up. Maybe that's something that you're interested in. You have you know, maybe your values are that you care for the planet and the environment. Um, maybe there's a product that you have that you want to turn into a refill. Um, you know, the soaps at the bottom of that slide, you know, they're made by Cole & Co, who um, have a really good business story where um, it was someone who wanted to set up a business and some, she, she noticed that the products that were in small boutique hotels you know, weren't the products that she would like to see or use. And so she started to set up that business. And then her husband, who was a scientist, 
he worked on the technical side of the business in creating the actual products themselves. And then their daughter got involved because she really loves marketing. And now Coal & Co is one of Wales's you know, top businesses selling these products and refills all across the UK. Um, they're selling them to hotels, selling them, and um, they have a shop in Cardiff. So there's lots of different ways that you can think about something that's missing from your high street, from your community, and how a business can fill that gap. Um, I also wanted to talk about franchises because, you know, not everyone knows what a franchise is. I had no idea. And um, so it was something I wanted to look at. Um, there's, I think it was really only when I, when I had children and I got into going to baby and toddler classes um, that I realised that that was quite a popular franchise, particularly for mums who had small children. Um, and a franchise is where you pay a certain amount of money and to a larger company. Um, they deal with the marketing, they have the product, and you then have to build up your client base on that product or that um, service in your local area. So you'll be given a specific area. Um, and you may have seen things like baby college, like rugby tots, you know, they're all franchises that you can pay some money to um, have that kind of bu business that's already well known and set up. You just have a certain area that you can deliver that business in. Um, the downside to that is some of them do cost quite a lot of money. They can be thousands of pounds. But on the plus side, you know, it can be something as simple as Avon. I know someone who lives and you know works in a care home and minimum wage job cleaning in a care home but they realized that a lot of the residents weren't able to go out during coronavirus they weren't able to get the products that they needed but they still wanted to have some control over the products that they they wanted to buy um, and you know elderly people maybe they weren't able to buy um, online because they didn't have the IT skills or the equipment. So this person set up an Avon business, which sounds like it's out of the 1980s, but they are still going. And she now has a thriving small business and a community of people who want to buy her product because they enjoy having those books to look through and choosing products themselves at a time when they're shielding and not able to go out. So there's always a way that you can do something. Um, is there anyone who's come across um, things like Avon or any sort of franchises that they have been interested in? If there's not, I also wanted to go on and talk about opportunities around COVID. Um, and this is where I want to come to a particular lady on the bottom of the screen in the black top called Abby Chamberlain. Abby left university because she was really struggling with dyslexia and, you know, trying to go through a degree when you have dyslexia can be really tricky for some people. And she found it really hard and wanted to try something else. So she had an idea for a business to deliver luxury hampers. Um, she started that, I think it was during lockdown, but I'll have to double check that. Um, and she's won the Startup Company of the Year. And I noticed today, because I follow her on Twitter, that um, she said that she is now, you know, broken the sales record month by month and is, is really working hard to get out hundreds of of hampers in December which is is quite exciting um, and maybe I will write to her and ask her um, to give some tips on how she was able to do that and overcome um, her barriers of dyslexia and how it enabled her to to get into business um, because I think that would be helpful to the person who who would mention dyslexia but a couple of other people I wanted to mention who have struggled in lockdown um, but have then turned their business around and, and learned to do something different. The one in the middle is um, what I call my coffee guy. And Peter is, um, 
you know, he lives near me, he's in my community, and he used to run a really small coffee hut by the train station. Obviously in lockdown, his business disappeared, nobody was getting the train, everyone was working from home, and his wife was um, had a baby in lockdown, and he was the main owner, so you know, he really had to do something to change his business because the business model he had had disappeared. So as you can see on the screen, he turned his coffee business into a mobile one and now he is outside the schools in our area at different mornings um, he runs coffee mornings in um, parks in the local area he's there rain or shine you know he's working really hard um, he, if you message him on social media he will stop at people's houses to bring them fresh coffee and um, freshly baked cookies and um, you know, one of the things I love is that he's brought the community together and that's what helped his business to thrive. So, um, you know, my six year old had seen him on the school run and said, you know, and, and he was telling children as they were going to school and he was bringing coffee to parents that he was going to um, meet up so that everyone could see the sunrise on a weekend morning. So we were dragged out of bed at six o'clock on a Saturday morning a few weeks ago. Um, so that we could all have coffee as a community. You know, obviously it was all um, socially distanced and safe. Um, there were about 30 or 40 people who all watched the sunrise together. Um, and so not only has he managed to turn around his business, but he's also managed to bring the community together, together in a really nice way. Um, and I thought that was just a lovely story to share with you. It might not be a woman in business, but I really enjoyed what he's done in our local community and how he's managed to support his family through what could have been a really difficult time. Um, I do have one final activity that I want to do with you. But before we go into that activity, I wanted to give people a chance to ask some questions. So I don't know if anyone had any questions, Emma, that um, we could come to. I have one question for you, Sarah, um, of one of, from one of our attendees. Wanting to know, we've heard lots of, um, sort of case studies and stories about women who have set up a business um, to sell a product. But what about setting up a business to provide a service? Um, just wondering, they're wondering if it's a good idea. Is there any advice for this? And they wanted to speak to somebody about that idea as well. So um, I have responded to them to let me know a bit more details and then we could look, potentially look for um, somebody who's kind of maybe doing something similar that they could um, speak to or maybe get some mentoring from. Uh, but just, yeah, just wondering what your thoughts are on providing service as opposed to selling a product. Definitely. I think, you know, the, the business that I'm in is very much of a service and, you know, it's all about you selling yourself, the kind of person that you are, um you know finding way to get that across and get it out on social media um i think if you're offering a service then it's very much about connecting with people because people will remember you and you know it's no different to a product really you know if you're buying a product from a small business then you're you're not just buying the product you're buying the person behind it um but that's the same and even more so for a service you know People could get a service from anywhere. You can get services online. You know, you can get them overseas. There's lots of ways that you can find the things you need without having to even speak to someone. But if you want to really have a business that is successful and that works really well, then you've got to share your personality behind that service. Hopefully that is helpful to that person. Thank you, Sarah. Um, we have another question as well, uh, which was asked a bit, a bit earlier. Um, a query in how to get a finance to start their business. So we are actually session number three in the series of webinars um, on the 17th of December is all about financing your business. So there will be a wealth of information provided to you from Business Wales about the services that they can offer and also um, the funding and, and um, finance that they have on offer. But just wondered if you knew of anything else, Sarah. Um, there's also the Welsh Government Barriers Grant, which has just been released as well, which offers um, women in business up to £2,000 towards the cost of setting up a business, which I think, you know, is a, is a great um, grant for women to access. What I would say is that, you know, if you're considering applying, then do it sooner rather than later before the pot runs dry. Um, you can find information about that online. So if you just Google Welsh Government Barriers Grant and it should pull up all the inf information for you. If you still can't find it, drop me an email and I'll send you the links. 
But yeah, Sarah, any other any, anything else to add to finance a new business? Um, yeah, I'm probably going to sound a bit a bit um, sensible here, but I'm married to an accountant, so I very much was told at the start of my business to you know work within your means, and so quite often I think you see businesses fail because they they want to go out and have everything shiny. They want a professional brand. They want the flyers. They want leaflets. You know, they want something that they can touch and hold that makes their business feel real. Um, but in reality, you don't need many of those things. You know, you can use free tools online. You know, things like Canva is really great for having a go at designing something yourself. And, you know, social media, Instagram and Twitter, you know, these kind of tools are free. You don't need to do paid advertising. You um, you just need to talk to people and that is really a huge value. Um, maybe we could go back to Laura and ask Laura how she financed her business because you know there are certain businesses that do need a certain amount of money at the start um, and, and maybe see if she has any inspiration or avenues where she was able to finance her business. Thank you, Sarah. Um, and also maybe worth mentioning about other support available as well for um, our attendees today considering setting up a business. I know when we spoke yesterday, Sarah, you mentioned about signposting some of them to um, a service that your, uh, your contact was providing. Yes. So the amazing Kerry, who runs a business called Mubo, and you can find that on social media, it's M-U-B-O. And it is short for um, Mum's Business. I don't know what the rest of it is. I think it's Mum's Business Support is, is really what she does. And um, she has been provided with some funding through Business Wales to support people who are mums and who want to set up their business through a programme of learning. Um, she's putting that together now and it'll be launched in the new year. Um, so I'll be able to send you a link to that. Um, because that will be something that lots of people might be interested in. Um, I will mention to her that, you know, it, obviously people on this call won't, not everyone is a mum. Um, and so we want to make sure that there's opportunities for everybody. Um, but she's someone who is a great contact to have in business. Um, so I'll make sure and I'll kind of introduce her to um, you, Emma, so that you've got that connection to pass on to people because that's the really important thing is connecting with people they are always you know one of the things that i enjoy most about um business is that you're able to connect with different people and if you could find someone who could support somebody else they'll always remember you being that person who connected them and then they will come back to you when they need your product or service um so it is all about you know making sure that you're talking to as many people as you can learning from those people and supporting them when you can. Absolutely, I think um, following these sessions, we'll we send out a bit of a, um, a signposting sheet of you know everybody that we spoke about today and various businesses that you can contact for support. I think um, with everything kind of going virtual at the moment, it's taken away those live sort of business networking events which perhaps you would attend and you know build some new contacts there. So if we can you know share our contacts with you, then hopefully that will help. Keep you on your journey. Definitely. And I, I, one thing I was thinking about actually is, um, you know, the way that we're delivering this is that people won't have had that opportunity to get to know each other. Um, so one thing that I thought might be useful, and I'd be happy to support if people were interested, is, um, you know, maybe we could set up a Facebook group, a closed group for the people who've participated in this program, um, so that they can get to know each other and support each other. And because maybe you don't know anyone and this is the first opportunity that you've had to get to know other people. So we could, um, you know, I'd be quite happy to help set that up if that's something that people were interested in. Thank you, Sarah. I think that's a really good idea. And if our attendees could just pop in the questions tab whether they would be interested and then we can um, we can make sure that you're invited to that group then and get those discussions going. So I think peer group support is so important. Um, being on a journey with other people really does help keep you on track and um, keep you you know on, on track to achieve those goals and you know challenges that you face perhaps other people are facing as well and if they can hear about how you overcome those challenges I think that's um, just really helpful for everybody yeah quite often we think we're the only person who's going through something when 
know, there's lots of people that will um, will have experienced the same thing and have found ways through it. You know, coming back to stuff like childcare, you know, other people will have ways that they've got around it that maybe you've never thought of. Um, and so there's always someone who, who can offer support and help if you go out and ask. And having a group like that, that, that is a safe space to ask those questions is always really, really helpful. Um, before we finish, there's one final thing that I wanted to ask people to do. Um, and that is to take an action. I want you to write this down because it's really important that you commit yourself to something on paper. Quite often, if I haven't written it down, then it's gone from my mind by the next morning. I'm sure there's a lot of similar people in that. Um, I want you to be brave. Think about something that you can do today or this week that will take you that one step closer to setting up your business. You know, maybe it's saying that today I'll, I'll share my idea with someone and ask them what they think. You know, you can tell them that you want kindness. You're generating ideas. You're not, you know, asking them for advice so that you can go into Dragon's Den. Maybe it's to do a little research. You know, maybe there is already a community group in your area and you've got an idea that you could run past that group to see if it would solve a problem that they have. You know, it could be that you want to look at other people that are doing similar things. You know, have a look what someone else does well in a business that you admire um, and see how your specific skills and your idea um, can provide something that that business doesn't offer. And just start to, to do that little bit of research. You know, maybe you're still absolutely stuck and you're interested in setting up a business, but you don't know what that idea could be. Um, you know, I think that that's something that maybe within a, a group that we could start to develop and start to chat through. But if that's you, you know, drop your name into the chat or just say, I've got no idea, help. And, you know, we can start to have that conversation offline and start to think about, you know, generating more ideas together. Um, one thing I do want to send out and I'll, I'll pass it to Emma after this so that she can give it to all of you is, you know, a great activity that is up to you if you want to do it. But it would be really helpful to start to help generate some of those thoughts for next week is to create a vision board. Um, and I'll send you a guide in how to do that because I love them. I think they're really, really helpful for pulling those things. You know, there was someone who said that they've got all these plans, but they don't turn them into action. And a vision board is really helpful for um, getting you to do that. And it's, you know, it's something that is really easy to do around your kitchen table, you know, with the kids involved as well, because it's cutting and sticking and lots of fun. Um, and maybe you want to take that leap. Maybe you've already got a name for your business idea and have a look if that name is free on Twitter or Instagram and your thing that you do today is to set up an account and just you know, interact with people on social media. So I want you to write down what your action will be um, and then next week we'll come back to them so we can hold you to account and make sure that you're taking that little step that we've asked you to take today. And I think we've nigh on come to our time up. So thank you. Is there any more questions before we finish? Uh, there isn't any coming through, but if anybody has any quick questions they want to just share with us, just pop them in the questions tab. I'm going to take control of the screen now just so you can have my contact details. And I just want to say a massive thank you to Sarah for delivering this, this session today. I know I felt really engaged and really, you know, I feel really inspired to set up a business myself now. Um, so thank you for that, Sarah. And thank you for everybody at home as well, sending in their personal experiences, their thoughts and their questions. It's been really helpful. And if you want to get in touch with us about anything today, then please, you know, drop me a line. Um, Hopefully you can see this. Here's my contact details. Um, drop me an email. And if you, you know, you're interested in trying to find a mentor, if you have any other questions for us, or if you go home tonight and you're lying in bed at 11 o'clock and thinking, oh, I really wish I asked Sarah that question, then please just drop me an email and we can ask Sarah offline and we can, you know, we can touch up on the questions again next week. Uh, the next session is the 16th of December. Let me just go back and bring up that slide. So next session, 16th of December, is there an idea in me? And we will be with Sarah again for that session. 
And then the, net, the following day, then we'll be looking at uh, the fun stuff, the finance, how to finance your business and look at you know what resources out there for you to support you on your journey. Um, I'm just going to check and see if we've had any more questions. Okay. Um, I'm really intrigued now to start learning about what people's ideas are. We're having um, lots of nice feedback. Brilliant session. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad that you've You've enjoyed the session, everybody, and just really looking forward to what comes up in next week's session now. Um, and yeah, we will we we'll try and get that Facebook group set up for you between now and next week, and then hopefully get those conversations happening offline as well. And we will send out a signposting sheet um, of all the kind of people that we've mentioned today as well, so that you can contact them when you're ready to. Um, okay, is there anything else from you, Sarah, before we wrap up? No, thank you. I just um, good luck, and I look forward to seeing everyone next week. Brilliant. Okay, I'll say goodbye now and sign off. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.